Okay, in this tutorial we're going to go over how to get the GoPy Go to run on Scratch. I'm going to write a program for you from scratch. We'll start with nothing and we'll see what it takes to build up a program that controls. We'll start off with just the LEDs. So before we start, I've got the GoPy Go connected to the PC. I've got it connected over Ethernet. I've got an Ethernet cord into it. You can see that I'm connected. I've got the two Ethernet uh, lights on the Raspberry Pi are lit up. It's connected to the cord, the cord's connected to a USB adapter. I'm doing this from a MacBook Pro, or a MacBook Air. The directions for how to do this are not really any different if you were to do it on a PC because I'm going to use VNC to log into the Raspberry Pi to write this first program in Scratch. Sort of VNC uh, viewer and connect to the Raspberry Pi. I'm connecting to Raspberry Pi dot local colon one. And the password is Raspberry. Great. So now I've got the VNC look at the desktop on the Raspberry Pi. And I've got my scratch icons over here, I'm going to start with those. First thing I'm going to do is actually open up scratch. We'll double click on scratch and we see scratch comes up. There are scratch cat. So what we're going to do is write a program that turns LEDs on the GoPi Go on and off. And before we start, we're going to use, under sensing, we're going to use um, uh, remote sensors to send data back and forth. I just want to go over to, uh, to sensing and then down to the bottom where you see this slider sensor value and sensors. I'm going to just click on it and I'll disable remote sensor connections and then I'll click on it again and enable remote sensor connections. So I see this dialog, the remote sensor connections enabled, pop up. Great, so that's on and I know that I can talk to, <clears throat> with this program we can talk to the program we're gonna run in the background to talk to the GoPi Go. So for this program I'm gonna start off with controls. I'm gonna write a program I think where the, <clears throat> the up button and the down button will turn on the left LED. So I'm going to go to, I went to control and then I chose the key control here. And if I click on the drop down, I'll see that I have the option of a bunch of different uh, keyboard uh, inputs, but I'm going to choose the up arrow. And the next thing I want to do is when the up arrow is pressed, I want to broadcast out the command to, um, to turn the LED on. So the command is going to be LEDL, which is the left LED, and then 255, which is the maximum. That means turn the LED on. I've got to bring those two sentences, LEDL and then the number, together. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to go down to join. So under operators and then join, I'm going to put that into broadcast, what I broadcast. So the first command is LEDL, which is going to tell the GoPi Go that we're talking about the, L, the left LED. And then the second command we want to send is actually 255. So the LEDs can be set from 0 to 255. Now if I wanted to sort of half turn it on, I might put in 125. Um, and if I wanted to turn it all the way off, I might put in 0. So let's see, how do we put in, if we want to turn the LED off when we hit the down arrow, we can go back to control and then click on the when, we'll put another control in there, another key control. Drop that in. And this time, we'll change that to down arrow because we want to 
have a different control. We'll go back again to broadcast and we'll drag a broadcast across. And then we'll go to under operators again, we'll go to join and we're going to join LEDL and zero. And something I like to do on scratch programs is just um, we'll try to make the scratch cat say something, give us a little bit of uh, uh, context for what commands we're sending. So we'll go back to looks and we'll say, say hello. And we'll just going to print out a little bit of background and uh, a little bit of troubleshooting. So we'll, when we set the LED on, we wanted to say LED on. And then when we set the LED off, we wanted to say LED off. So LED on, when I press the up arrow, it says LED on. And when I press the down arrow, it says LED off. So the next step is we're going to save it. And we'll save it to the desktop. And we'll call it, say, scratch go pi go. LED. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is actually exit Scratch. When you're writing your first program, you do need to take this step and exit Scratch. Um, for programs after, if you copy it, uh, you don't need to take this step. We're going to go ahead and we, next step is we're going to turn on uh, Scratch's background program. And this is the program that I was talking about earlier that's going to communicate between the GoPyGo and the uh, Scratch program. So we just turned it on. You can see it's just looking for Scratch running and it'll say there's an error because it doesn't see any Scratch and that's fine because we don't have any Scratch running on the Go Pi Go right now. So I'll go back to the program that I just wrote, Scratch Go Pi Go LED. And when I turn it on, I should get a message that says remote sensor connections enabled. And I hit, that's good, that's great. I'm gonna hit okay. And now when I press the up, and the down, I'm getting these responses. And I'll show you real quick on some video what that looks like. And that's kind of it. So now I've got <clears throat> my program written and I'm connected to the GoPyGo. I'll just show you with this first program, I've got the up arrow and you can see the LED turns on. And then if I have my down arrow, it turns off. That's pretty much all you need to do to write your first Scratch program. If you follow this step by step, you too can write out some controls and have your Raspberry Pi robot moving. Um, if you want to see a list of all the controls that are supported, you can go back into the GoPyGo Go programming scratch folder. We'll go to software and then scratch and you'll notice in the examples the um, GoPyGo Go basic test has almost all the uh, programs that are supported by scratch. Again, the remote sensors are on. You can see that when you call when you broadcast backwards it sends the GoPyGo Go backwards. When you broadcast it forwards it sends it forwards. You've got some LED and some speed uh, controls, um, and then rotations and, and stopping. So, so for your next step, you'll want to look at the um, uh, the example programs and see what other broadcasts there are uh, to get your GoPyGo moving.